Hey, welcome to the Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour, also known as Live from Dennis's House. Today, we are going to be spotlighting the Billy Preston. Not just any Billy Preston, the Billy Preston. And we're going to be spotlighting specifically this album, The Kids and Me. But we'll be talking about all his albums, his whole life, everything, and the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, all that stuff. So, first thing I want to do, though... Oh, it's a special show, though. You notice it's just me and Cha-Cha here. Dennis and Cha-Cha. You know how to know the difference? Dennis, (laughs) Cha-Cha. So, uh, yes, that, thanks. uh, This is you. (laughs) This is me. Now, because it's flu season, we're not allowing anyone into the studio except us. uh, We've uh, cordoned off the entire studio. No one will be allowed until spring. I'm going to start out right now with the, the Billy Preston bio and tribute. He died many years ago, so it was a, a late tribute, but uh, we felt we've been discussing doing a Billy right. uh, Preston for a long time. We were big fans of Billy Preston, loved him. He was everywhere during our childhood. He was a uh, huge influence on um, my Afro, and he did have the best <laughs> Afro in music. Yeah. Remember, Oscar Gamble, <laughs> who we talked about, had the best um uh, afro, afro in, baseball. in baseball billy had the best afro in music and uh he seemed like a very nice guy he was always smiling that gap tooth smile he <laughs> yeah. seemed like a really nice guy so let's let's go through his life here so he was born william everett preston september 2nd 1946 in houston and then he moved to la he was raised there and in the church he learned how to play the organ <laughs> don't even <laughs> <laughs> and, He learned to sing. He was with his mom. And um, he was actually a child prodigy. This is something I didn't... There was actually a lot of things about Billy Preston that I didn't know. And you're not going to know him either. And for one, he was a child prodigy. That at age 10, he was on the Nat King Cole show. And he played uh, the organ and sang with Nat King Cole sitting next to him. Wow. And they sang. They sang Blueberry Hill. (laughs) <laughs> by uh, um, <laughs> so I got felt my thrill. <laughs> yeah, it was hysterical. I saw by that clip organ? today. <laughs> yeah, I saw that clip today, and it was just hysterical. That uh, first little Billy's sitting there playing and singing, and then Nat King Cole comes and sits down, Billy. and Billy gets up and he's singing, and King, Nat King Cole is playing. So it was uh, great stuff. You should look that up. Uh, absolutely. And then um, at. at uh, teenager he went on tour with little richard and um he actually that's when he first met the beatles in hamburg germany like 1962 that he was on tour with little richard and they were playing uh, opening up for the beatles or vice versa most likely vice versa <laughs> yeah. at that point right uh yeah, yeah so he met with them and he so became awesome. friends with them especially george harrison and you'll hear that come back into play later on and, uh, you know, then he played with everybody, Sam Cooke, Ray Charles. And, uh, you know, he had a, a little solo career of his own going on with a few albums at that point. But then fast forward to the 60s, to the late 60s, Ooh. that he played um, with everybody at this time. He was the most sought after session musician around. Mm. He played with Sly Stone. Oh, and he was cool. very instrumental with that. I'm going to come back to Sly Stone, make a note of Sly Stone. We'll have to come back and revisit okay. that because it's a very interesting story. But then, of course, he sh- his meteor. How do I? How do you say meteoric? <laughs> He shot like a meteor. <laughs> his claim to fame, his rise to fame, thanks to the Beatles, I would say, that um, he w- remained friends with the Beatles all these years, right? And then at the end, in 69, the Beatles were almost breaking up. They were right. fighting. And, uh, they were at the George, end. Right. And George ran into <laughs> uh, Billy Preston. Ooh. Hope he didn't hurt him. Yeah. And um, he invited him to come, right? He figured, all right, you know, this guy's so nice with his gap to smile and his afro. He'll cheer everybody up. And, you know, and it did. It worked. And that they loved him so much that John even talked about inviting him to be a member of the Beatles. Really? That's why he's known as the fifth Beatle. Oh. But Paul said, well, us four can't even get along. Why uh, bring someone else into the mix? Right, right. Yeah. So he never was actually oh. an official member of the band. So he was the Wouldn't fifth Wouldn't he have been Beatle. the sixth Beatle? Who's the fifth then? Well, wasn't well, everybody Pete Best was, the fifth Beatle? No, no. Pete oh, no. Best was 
thrown out before they ever became. But wasn't You're talking the about the, Brian Epstein. Yeah. Yes. Well, wasn't Brian Epstein was fifth? dead at that time, oh. so he couldn't be. So that that's okay. why you actually know that I am a Beatle now because I was once the 72nd Beatle. And through everybody passing away over the years, that I've moved up. I'm now the third Beatle. I could be a Beatle. You can't, no. It's closed. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> if you weren't on the list prior to 1980, that's it. You're off. So, um, <laughs> cutting the line. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. So, Billy Preston, he played on Let It Be and mm -hmm. Abbey Road. And of course, of course, he played on Get Back. That's uh, wow. what you mostly know him for. Wow. And you know what the interesting is? The single of Get Back, it's the only time this ever happened. It said the Beatles with Billy Preston. Oh, that's right. Right, so, right, right, right. So, you know, never before, no matter who played on the albums or anything. So uh, never got credit. That's a no, but that's a huge credit that they gave yeah, him. Yeah, sure. So, um, and then he was there for the final performance of the Beatles. He was up on that rooftop. Wow. Remember yeah, when they were right. playing on Abbey Road I rooftop? Do remember he that. was there. Yeah, and, uh, that's so cool. Yeah, so that that it was, was a, really cool. That was a great claim to fame right there yeah. to be involved <laughs> with the Beatles. So anyway, right. he, his uh, charm and a uh, nice guy only lasted so long because the Beatles broke up right after that. Yeah, they said, uh, it's I guess because <laughs> Billy went home and they said, that's it. We can't, we can't yeah. do it anymore. So uh, yeah, so they broke up, but he stayed in touch with them and he continued to play on all their albums, all their solo stuff. And he was uh, huge in the concert for Bangladesh, the George Harrison uh concert in mm -hmm. 1971 in Madison Square Garden. Wow. Billy Preston was there and he did an amazing version of his song That's the Way God Planned It. This great gospel song. I, I love that. I know that song. Oh, you know it. You gotta know it. And if you don't, you better know it. <laughs> You'll be tested on it next week. So, um, yeah. So he was signed yeah. to Apple Records okay. and his first uh, album on Apple Records was That's the Way God Planned It. Featuring That's the Way God Planned It. Can you and sing a little? That's the way God planned it. That's the way God wants it to be. I don't awesome know if I song. Know that song. Great rock uh, gospel song. It's amazing. So, uh, hmm. so anyway, uh, I want to go through his solo career now. That <laughs> you have to hear these albums that he produced as a teen. This was, you know, because he was an organ player. <laughs> and so his first album that came out was called <laughs> "The Most Exciting Organ Ever" <laughs> by Billy Preston. This is right? just gonna keep the going. next one, "The Wildest Organ Ever" <laughs> by <laughs> Billy Preston. Some and then, <laughs> of course, the next one. It was, this was a bootleg. I had this one. It was called "Tulips on My Organ." <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, wasn't he a drummer or something? No, he played the organ. What oh, are you talking he? about? Yeah, I just I said know. that. Billy Preston, he played the organ, the keyboards, <laughs> and he sang, and he was a great showman. And those were legitimately his album names. That's pretty cool. Right, except for the tulips on the organ. I made that one up. <laughs> Did you hear the, about the time when I was in church and the priest grabbed me by the organ? <laughs> I, a thousand times. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, yes. So he had a huge solo career, too. You want to talk about that now? Sure. Yes, we do. We're going to talk about, um, yeah, let's talk about some of his uh, albums and songs now that he had. That uh, he had, like I said, that's the way God planned it. I wrote a simple song, which is right here in my hands. And then it was The Kids and Me. This is the other one right in my hand. So if you have them, go uh, get them. We're going to listen to them later and smell them. Okay. So listen to these songs. Will It Go Round in Circles? I Went love to that. number one. Of course. Out of Space was number two. Space Race, number four. Nothing from Nothing, number Leaves one. Nothing. Yes. And then um, later on in his career, he uh, had these songs with this woman, Syretta. Cy Serena? Sarita. I don't know. It was, it's called With You, I'm Born Again. So oh, it was, right. He did a duet. Yeah, yeah. And he, he kind of, that was later on at the end yes, of the 70s or maybe yes. the 80s. It was like a departure from his, because uh, he... he he influenced everything in the early 70s there where, you know, he was uh, soul, funk, R&B, rock. You know, there was nobody really like him he ran at the, the time. Gamut. Yeah, there was nobody really like him. Maybe Stevie Wonder. Um, right. Oh, man. But uh, for that one 
stretch in time there from, uh, I don't know, 72, 73, 74, 75, those few years. He was the biggest star in the world. Wow. One of them, anyway. Right, yeah. And he, but he yeah. was everywhere. You looked, uh, right. Don Kirshner's rock concert, Midnight right. Special. There was Billy Preston with his giant afro, yes. And uh, he was just like having so much fun, like I said. And he was a great showman, too. He was up dancing around. Yeah. He had his keyboard around his neck. He was playing it. I'll have to check that out, though, because remember when we talked to Edgar Winter, he said he invented that to have the keyboard playing like a guitar. Oh, yeah, but I kinda he did seen, say that. I saw Billy Preston doing it, so I'll have to check my dates there. Okay. So uh, we'll you see about that. that. <laughs> 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 I don't want to call anybody a liar, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, You and love calling people a liar. You know that, I bet you didn't even know this, that he wrote the song... Billy Preston wrote this song with Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys. What? You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Wait a minute. The song that uh, Joe Cocker yeah, made famous. Right. Yes. That was Who written by Billy first? Preston. Billy Preston wrote it. Okay. Performed it. Wasn't a big hit. Okay. But Joe Cocker, that Took son of it. a that son of a bitch Joe Cocker, I don't know how what? he does this. <laughs> that he manages what? to take songs and, and make, make them, them better. Yes, He's the he only did. person in the world who's really ever done that. Everybody else at best His covers were better yeah, than the original. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. He's the only one in the world that can do that. That's why he it's belongs really, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame he if he's going? not. I'm not sure. At last check, I don't think he was. I'm going to have to check that again. but Because they have this rule that if you don't write the songs, usually you don't get in. Oh. But that's not hmm. fair. He. Uh, well, you know? I don't know. I well. mean, did he write anything? I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. He was an interpreter. Not right, a, all right. right. Let's get off the track. This is not the Joe Cocker show. Okay. This is the Billy Preston show. So uh, where was I? Cha-cha. Um, you were saying that he did a... A song with Sarita. That was Avengers. like 20 minutes ago. No. So, all right. So, and here's <laughs> another fact about Billy Preston that you may not know. What's he was that? the first musical guest on Saturday Night Live. The premiere episode, 1975 or whatever, it was Billy Preston. I don't think that's and true. There was I two, think you're wrong. Listen, I'm going to tell you and then you're going to say, oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> okay. There was two musical guests right? on that night. One was Janice Ian and one was Billy Preston. I think it's. I think you're wrong. Who are you I saying think it, it was is? Gino Vanelli. Get out of here! Saturday Night Live. All right. I, I want to uh, say. That I am. I may have to remove you from the show because of Dan. Gino Vanelli was never on Saturday Night Live. It was the coolest show in the world. And they're not gonna have Gino Vanelli as the first guest. Dan. I think you're talking about Wonder Rama, maybe. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> The first musical guest. Can I Google it right now? <laughs> no, you're going to Google it on the commercial, and then we're going to come back. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but, okay. Oh, so, yes, we'll come back to that. Wait, if I'm right, do I get a disclaimer at yes, the end of the I, show? Yes, we're going to come back, and we're going to say for sure right now after the commercial whether it's true or not. And I, right. not like I won't cut it out. We'll gonna stick to it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I'm wrong, we're not going to cut it out. Okay. So, um, yeah, so he was also instrumental in another song <laughs> that Billy Preston was like, he always said things. He had great <laughs> expressions and people would make a song out of it. Like he, uh, Stephen Stills took his uh, remark. He said, well, if you can't love the one you're with, lo <laughs> whatever else I If you can't be with the one you <laughs> love, love the one right. you're with. And what would you do without <laughs> me? I don't even know. And Stephen Stills said, hey, can I use that for a song? And he said, yeah, sure. So he comes yeah, back with love the one. Love the one you're with uh, by <laughs> Stephen Stills. So, uh, you know, and uh, he had a, a lot of demons, too. Did you know well, about this? most of them do. Uh, a lot, a lot of demons that I wasn't aware of either. And we're going to get to those after the break, and you're going to do all this. You and know it. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So we're going to play some more music, and then we're going to come back, and what we're going to we get on Google, and we're going to check out whether it was Gino Vanelli versus Billy Preston. There's a $1,000 bet going on this right now. Right. So on the break, as promised, we looked it up and Cha Cha was very, very wrong. I was wrong. Not <laughs> yes. very, very no, wrong. No, very, very wrong. Well, the no, first musical guests were on Saturday Night Live. It was, like I said, <sighs> Billy Preston and Janice Ian. And then Cha Cha did some more digging and found out that 
Uh, Eugene Levy did an impersonation of Gene Vanelli, Gino Gene Vanelli, Vanelli. <laughs> on SCTV. No, what I found was, go ahead. Go ahead, you explain well, it. Well, that he was the first white guest, Caucasian, white, Caucasian <laughs> musical guest on Soul Train. Yes. So I got my quite shows. different. Yes. It's so you owe me thousand dollars. So. Um, all right, so before we go into uh, Billy Preston's demons, we're going to talk about his other people that he played with back in the day. And my favorite was the Rolling Stones, of course, that he was uh, a big part of the Stones' success. I guess they stole him when the Beatles broke up. They stole him, and uh, he played on all their albums, their greatest albums of all time. Sticky Fingers, Exile on Main Street, Goat's Head Soup, It's Only Rock and Roll, Black and Blue. And uh, they actually had a falling out after that. Um, but in 1975, Cha Cha, he was on their world tour. Why did they have a falling we'll out? We'll get Do to that. Know? We'll get to that. But look at this. I'm holding up a pamphlet the wow. official tour program from the Rolling Stones Tour of the Americas 1975. That's and amazing. you know who was at that concert? You. Little Dennis. A little yeah. 10 year old Dennis <laughs> yes. was at this concert with his older brother and sister. Yes. I've spoken about that about 10,000 times, they, but I never get enough of it. Their that, claim to fame. Yes. That I was thinking about it today, preparing for the show. And it was really the most defining moment of my life. I agree. That it was. <laughs> I can't imagine, I, I can't even comprehend how amazing this was for a stupid 10 year old kid to be at Madison Square Garden seeing the Rolling Stones the with your teenage brother and yes, sister like, that, who did that and yeah. it was just it's such amazing. a defining moment and I loved that concert so much and I was thinking about it and uh, I just I remember you know things come back to me now and do you know who the opening acts were that one of the opening acts was Rufus featuring Chaka oh, Khan wow. and I, I even saw this somewhere it was the Eagles were there really Really? And I don't remember seeing the Eagles at all. So maybe that was a different part of the tour. But I remember Rufus and Chaka Khan and Billy Preston, not only he wasn't an opening act or anything. He was a member of the Rolling Stones and he did his own songs during the, the show. Wow. So that's that, pretty impressive. Yeah, he was on stage playing with everything, with uh, all their songs. And then in the middle, he, he did uh, a couple songs. I think he did Out of Space. Um, and it was so cool that him and Mick had this dance off uh, on stage. <laughs> oh, that's and, amazing. And uh, yeah, it was just <laughs> yeah. it was just such an amazing time. I remember as as if it was yesterday. Aww. And that um, even leading up to it, it was so exciting that the Stones were supposed to have a press conference that day. Back it was like May of that year, right? And uh, they didn't have the press concert, but instead they drove down Fifth Avenue on a flatbed truck with all their equipment playing brown sugar oh my yes and then they unveiled this billboard with all the tour dates wow. and everything and wow. it was just so exciting and i just i ran out in my pajamas <laughs> when i saw this trying to run yeah. down the fifth <laughs> avenue from queens when my mom stopped me yeah. <laughs> so i didn't get to, to oh that God. but i got to madison square garden it was just such an event with all these you know, oh teenagers yes. smoking pot and yeah. acting like uh, morons. Right, and it was high just... on anything and everything. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So it was a uh, it was a great event, and I remember seeing Billy. This was my only time that I saw Billy Preston also in concert. Wow, did you? Yeah, I, you probably didn't even realize you were seeing Billy Preston. No, of course I did. I was well aware. I wasn't a stupid at kid at ten. Oh, I was. Why do you think I was there? Because I, I was know. wise Parents beyond my years. Told your brother and sister they had to take you. Well, no, they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't wise beyond my years. <laughs> yeah, and I, I loved the Rolling Stones at this point. I was yeah, so immersed in true. music at age 10. Yeah. So um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just wish I had the ticket stub now. Oh. I used to have it, I think. I don't know what happened it's to it. It's somewhere. <laughs> I bet you have it somewhere. Uh, but I got the uh, official tour program. Yeah, that's, that's all that matters. that's pretty cool. That yes. is pretty cool. So the what happened, it was... What happened? <laughs> when they did Black and Blue album, right. uh, you know, like he was a huge influence on the Rolling Stones too. That they they played a lot of like R and B during this time, you know, especially Black and Blue album. Like because Muddy Waters. Be, was there? Influence? No, that's yeah, yeah. But now because they were playing with Billy Preston, they were doing a lot of R and B and uh, that kind of stuff. Especially like I said, the Black and Blue album. Right. And um, one song it was called Melody that Billy Preston sings on, but he is alleged to have written that song. 
or co-wrote it or something, but Mick didn't give him a writing credit for oh. it. He said uh, influenced by or inspired uh. by Billy Preston or something like that. And Billy was like, yeah, you can well, keep your inspired by. I uh, <laughs> want the money. So, uh. um, Ooh. Yeah, so but they still they they didn't remain you know best of friends, but he still play, played on their albums and things like that later on. But this was a time and a place, 1975, I, which I will never remember, never forget. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so um, it's not like Gino Vanelli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was a very bad businessman. Apparently, and all his money was stolen by all his oh. managers. Of course, by that everybody. Was but all of them he, back he, then. Let's get into his struggles and his demons now. This is what I did not know. He struggled his whole life to cope with his homosexuality. <gasps> what? Yeah, see, I, that was it was completely in the closet. He, nobody knew about this. Well, I the friends didn't did. Know. I didn't know, and I know everything. Yeah. Keith knew. You know, his close circle of friends knew, but the public did not know until okay. right before his death. He. Uh, came out but really? yes yeah, so that that was always a demon for him and the fact Back that he then. came from the church especially and he was so he was such right. a christian and he was still involved with this so and the fact that he was sexually abused as a young boy also By who? he was he was performing in a touring production of amos and andy and he was repeated, per, uh, yeah. repeatedly repeatedly <laughs> yeah. abused by the touring company's pianist yeah exactly <gasps> When Preston told his mother about the abuse, she did not believe him and failed to protect him. The abuse subsequently that. went on for the entire summer, and Preston stated that he was also later abused by a local pastor. So there you go. It was a horrible uh, experience that he had to go through. Oh, this is a yes. terrible uh, Well, story. here you go. Here's an, another one that affected him. Another traumatic incident um, affected Preston deeply, occurred in the early 70s, and he was engaged to an actress model, Kathy Silva, at this time. Okay. So uh, Preston had become close friends with Sly Stone, like I said. We're going to come back to this. And he made many com contributions to his recordings and of the trademark, landmark album, There's a Riot Going On. Uh, Preston was involved in that. So Preston was devastated when he came home one day to oh. find Sly Stone in bed with Silva. And then later, they famously married each other on stage at Madison Square Garden. Who did? Sly Stone and Ma this woman, now oh married. My God. Yeah, they got married on Madison Square Garden oh stage to torment God. the guy. So um, it said well. Silva's affair with Stone was the trigger that led Preston to stop having relationships with women. It was after this incident that he began abusing cocaine and having sex with men. His drug abuse was his way of coping with internal conflicts he felt about his sexual urges. So there you have it. I mean, the The wow. cause of uh, his downfall. And then... Uh, this is such a yes, sad story. Yes, it's a very story. sad story now. Yeah. In 1991, he was arrested and convicted for insurance fraud after setting fire to his own house in L.A. There you go. He was treated for alcohol and cocaine addictions. And the same year, he was arrested, arrested for sexually assaulting a 16-year-old Mexican boy after picking him up at a gathering point for day laborers. After submitting to a drug test, he tested positive for cocaine. And then he entered uh, no contest, please, to the cocaine and sexual assault charges. He was sentenced to nine months at a drug rehab and three months of house arrest. It's like so, a vicious cycle. Yeah, there you go. And that, oh you know, that goodness. a lot of people, I heard people talking about him at this time that they didn't know this Billy Preston, that the Billy Preston that they knew from back in the day in the 70s, he was the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, and everybody well, loved he him. Was. And he just wanted to make music. And, you know, that's why all these people, he didn't know anything about business, didn't care. And all these filthy animals came and they stole his money. But, um, you know, even the, in the throes of his drug addiction, he was still the nicest guy, they said. You know, like some people are bad people and they'll do bad things. Well, he, he just was hurting himself and nobody else. And uh, everybody still Mexican loved him. Boy. Well, yeah, that's a whole nother story. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. But <laughs> I don't know. Where. I don't know if it's appropriate, but, you know. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> He oh. suffered a kidney disease brought on by his hypertension. He received a kidney transplant in 2002. His health continued to deteriorate. 
He entered <laughs> drug rehab in Malibu, blah, 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 blah. And he suffered uh, pericarditis there, whatever that means, leading to respiratory failure that left him in a coma. And he passed away June 6, 2006 in Scottsdale, Arizona. How old was he? He was 59. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, so that was uh, 12 years ago. Wow. Very sad. Yes, okay, very young. Sad. Young, very well, young. To he be... lived it, man. Yeah, he lived. Uh, yeah, that's why drugs are bad, you know? So, and it just goes to show just you. Just say no. People I can't get over that abuse, you know? I know. It just, you uh, have to wonder, like, how, how you live through that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and do these people prey on these kids because they send something in them like well no it's just it appears like, that why the Billy mother Preston, why any because they had access but, to him because he was a star he was going around with these adults the I mother so, wasn't right, watching right. there apparently was like no girl, father the young girls who were abused yeah, by yeah. these men filthy yeah. animals they should rot in hell yes so, and sly stone i was a huge sly stone fan i don't like this uh what he uh, did to billy though yeah but what's not was right that about did he have why did he why did he do that to Billy? Did well, he Well, he liked him? that girl, I yeah, guess. Yeah, but to you know? be so hurtful and to be so blatant. <laughs> You're like... kidding. Married on Madison Square Garden stage. Yeah. Yeah, right? I, I don't know. Hmm. We'll have to uh, call in to uh, Sly Stone and find this well, out. Well, he's crazed as yeah, it, he, right? He's he, it completely came back lost to, his mind. It came back on him, well, too. let's find this What comes crystal around, woman. goes around. Yeah, right? Wherever she yeah, is, who knows? Yeah, she probably got hers. But anyway, over the years, you know, he still, he stung, he uh, held tight to his Christian beliefs. And that was a, because uh, he did, he was always involved in the church and it was very conflicting to him. Even when he was recording uh, songs like Sympathy for the Devil, mm -hmm. when he was recording that and when he was uh, playing that. And he recorded the atheist song God by John Lennon. And, you know, he had to like separate himself from that because he was such a, you know, Christian. But, um, you know, and he kept playing gospel music and was involved in the church. And he still performed even, uh, you know, he, he went on tour with Ringo Starr, Eric Clapton. And in the later years, he played on the Red Hot Chili Peppers albums, too. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And he played with Peter Frampton. He played with every Barbara Streisand and, of course, the Beatles and all of that stuff. So wow. uh, Everybody was anybody. Yeah, yeah. So, and like I said, you know. If you look back on the 1970s, Billy he was there, was there, you know, and his fro, yeah. this, <laughs> yes, this fro right. here and yeah. his glasses and uh, everything about him was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I think we got a centerfold Smell picture in here. Oh, oh no, it's not upside a down. centerfold. No, nah, it's nothing. It's not that great. <laughs> so anyway. So, yes, it's now time to smell the album before yeah. we wrap this up. This is a good one, too. Ooh. Oh my God, that smells awesome. Yes, both of them. Go home. If you're playing at home, oh, go get your no. albums. It's now time to smell. This is. Ah, uh, nothing smells better than this 1972. Was in the of the church, for sure. <laughs> it was yes. under the church. You know where I got this album? From no. a day laborer in front of Home Depot the other day for a buck each. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it. Show is wrapped up now, unless you have anything else you want no, to add about No, I don't, but I'm Billy very Preston. upset about Gino Vanelli because... <laughs> I, it doesn't even make sense. It does, because he it was, was so obscure. Listen, that, that Gino Vanelli, it doesn't make sense that you would think this would happen. Gino Vanelli is a big douche with a big douchey <gasps> oh, song. Oh, my God. And there's no way... It's a teeny bopper, sappy so little song. So how did he get on... Soul, Star, Soul Train's a whole That's nother it, story. Okay. That's a whole nother story. Saturday Night Live was the coolest show on TV at this time. And the, no way they would allow Gino Vanelli on the air. But who did they have first? <laughs> Billy, Billy Preston. Preston. And who else? Janice Ian. Yeah. And she was cool at that time because she had that song at 17, at 17, which was a good song. So, uh, Whoa, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a good song. All right, so... <laughs> That's it. We're wrapping this show up, and we're going to play some more music. Uh, let's see. What should we play now? What are we up to? Hmm. Oh, I know what we're going to play. We're going to play Melody by the Rolling Stones, oh, which we fun. discussed before. And we're going to play Will It Go Round in Circles by Billy Preston and the Artist of the Month. So we didn't mention. What was your favorite uh, Billy Preston well, song? Well, you know that that's my favorite. Will It Go Round in of Circles? Of course. Nothing from Nothing's pretty good, too. No. Right. It's okay, but no. I think I'm going to have to go, go with that's the circle. way God planned it. Being I'm, a good Christian man yeah. that I am, I'm going to have to go with that. You know, I you should go with that. I also spent many years <laughs> in the church choir and <laughs> behind the organ. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Madhouse Magazine Radio oh, Hour. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>
474 The Mix. Check us out next time, which, uh, you know what we're going to be doing? What? Since we're still sequestered in the here, we're going to be recording a Valentine's Day show, just me and you. Oh. And we're going to do love songs, sappy love songs or something like I'm, that. I'm the you queen know? of sappy yeah. love songs. Maybe Gino Vanelli will be on that show, too. So, there you have it. I See you next died. time. Did he? I don't know. Wow. No, he didn't die. All right, well, we'll get back to you on that. Too, so. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Madhouse Magazine Radio Wallet. See you next time. Let's hear it for us. Yay!